what type of startups will be there in the biotech space in the next 25 years? What kind of technologies they will be using? And what kind of products or services they will create? Well, we have not seen the future, but we definitely know one thing. And that is, biotech's future is here. Because today we are living in an era where biotechnology is merging with various other sciences and we call it as interdisciplinary function. Now these cross-domain interlinked functions are helping the biotech and pharma industry grow faster than ever. So today in this video, we are going to deep dive into probably 7 to 10 different type of startups which will exist in the future and then you, if you have a better understanding of that, then you can strategize your career accordingly and get a job in these startups. Now to start with, the first thing first you should know is there will be a lot of innovation getting into gene therapy and various other therapies. So we will call it as innovative therapies. Now, the next generation of biotech startups will be focusing on groundbreaking therapies which includes gene editing, which includes personalized medicine, which includes regenerative treatments, which includes innovations that will make things faster, make things better and it will improve the efficiency and all at the same time we will it will change the way we approach the disease it will change the way we treat the diseases for, for that matter we'll be getting into personalized medicine so tailor making the approaches and then we will be able to focus on individual patients rather than just creating one size fits all medicine so innovation in gene therapy is going to be one side wherein we will see a lot of startups coming in in the next 25 years. So gene editing, CRISPR, molecular biology is where you should be focusing on if you want to get into the FET lab. Now, the next one, next type of startup which will rule the world of biotech is getting into artificial intelligence. Well, even Biotechnica is now pivoting into artificial intelligence and I can tell you as we hire more artificial intelligence uh, based scientists who are into biotech, I must tell you that this is getting exciting as we speak. I am getting requests from all across the world, from companies as well as individual scientists who want to do their wet lab work, analyze the data and ask us how can we use AI in extrapolating this data? How can we use machine learning and deep learning to further accelerate our research? So this is where we have artificial intelligence integration into biotech research. So that's the second point. Now, AI is becoming a cornerstone. It is enhancing the drug discovery, diagnostics, patient care, and of course, startups are known to leverage new technology, right? And that is what startups will do. They will use AI for predictive analytics, for imaging, molecular modeling, and they are poised to lead the industry. So the next billion dollar company in the biotech space will be from the AI in biology space. So you have to gear up for this space because this is right now hot. It is going to be hot for the next 50, 60 years also. Starting with the next, the third point for today will be sustainable bioprocessing. So I'm, I'm sure you must have heard of bioprocessing, right? But what happens is when we are doing bioprocessing, we also impact the environment. What if we could use environmental sustainability? We could keep that in mind and then design our bioprocess in that way. So startups have started already developing eco-friendly bioprocesses for manufacturing, waste reduction and renewable energy sources for which is essential for the future. Now these companies will aim to balance the technological advancement with environmental requirements. So this is, this is where green chemistry, this is where sustainable bioprocessing will help scientists develop better pro products which does not damage the environment. So that's the third type of startup you will see in the future. The fourth type of startup which you are going to see in the future is going to be in the 3D printing, regenerative medicine and stem cell space. Now, why do I say that? There is a reason. There's a lot of money involved here. A lot of people lose limbs. A lot of people become handicapped, meet with accidents. A lot of people seek organ donation. This particular industry, 3D printing, regenerative medicine and stem cells aims at replacing this entire thing with something much more ethical, much more faster, much more better, right? So that is where bioprinting advances in 3D bioprinting and tissue engineering is paving the way to create organs and tissues for transplantation. Now we are seeing more and more startups in this because of one more reason and that is war. You know, war is the biggest business in any country or 
in between two countries. It's the biggest business. But both sides get the damage when this business happens, when this transaction takes place, right? But other countries benefit. So there is a lot of research happening in DRDO, in BARC and various other uh, countries such as DARPA in US where they are thinking of how can we use bioprinting to replace organs or limbs in case our soldier gets injured? How can we help him heal faster? So that is where bioprinting will come into picture. Now the next one which I have for you is a little different than regular things which is happening and that is microbiome research. Have you heard of it? Let me know in the comment section. Human microbiome, we call it as gut-brain axis, is unlocking new potential for treating a wide array of conditions right from gastrointestinal disorders to mental health issues. Startups are focusing on microbiome research and are discovering innovative probiotics, prebiotics and microbiota targeted therapies which will help individuals overcome their weaknesses, vulnerability due to weak microbiome flora. Now this is a big field where antimicrobial resistance can also be taken care of if we are looking at microbiome research. The next phase, the next one which I can tell you, the sixth one will be brain-machine interface. Already we are seeing two to three companies in this space and a lot of government institutes are working in this direction. What if someone who is in coma, what if someone who is unconscious, we could interact with their brain? What if we could upload our brain to a server? What if we could train our brain to interact with the internet without keyboard, mouse and a monitor? What if... You could watch this video without holding your phone, but you are watching inside your retina, inside your eyes. All of that happens when you have brain-computer interface, BCI. So you can get into that space. That's the sixth one. Moving ahead, the seventh one which I have for you is again very, very interesting uh, field. And basically, I have uh, doing a lot of research on this field. And this field is all about anti-aging. Have you heard of anti-aging? Now, we all know that we, we, our parents, our grandparents, they all get old and one day die. We, we don't want them to die. But billionaires have a billion dollar reason not to die, right? We have an emotional reason. They have a billion dollar reason. So, of course, our views align. So, that is why a lot of dollars are being put into this space and that is anti-aging research. Because Jeff Bezos doesn't want to die. Elon Musk doesn't want to die, right? So, what they will do? They will give money to the scientists and say, hey, do research on this. Tell me a way so that I never die, right? So after BCI, this is a hot topic because biologically also people don't want to die. And BCI will obviously make sure that you don't die digitally. But hey, that may not be real. That will be still be a simulation. But what if we, our biological body never dies? That is where anti-aging research is going on. And you are going to see a lot of money, whether success happens or not, but still the sector will get a lot of money. So this was the seventh. Now coming to the eighth one which I have for you, that is nanotechnology in medicine. Nanobots, nanotech innovations are enhancing the drug de delivery systems, imaging techniques and even cancer treatments. A lot of startups are getting into the space of nanomedicine and are developing targeted therapies that minimize side effects and improve the treatment outcomes or results. Now that's the Eighth one for you. Now, the ninth one which I have for you will be bioinformatics and big data. Now, bioinformatics you already know. Big data you already know. But how this will get revolutionized is the advent of quantum computing and stronger computers. The stronger the computer, the merger of AI, ML, DL, which is deep learning and bioinformatics and big data, you will see the integration of metabolomics and all this, those omics. Uh, transcriptomics and all of that and the big data analytics and this will be crucial for understanding complex biological processes. We will see more startups which will excel in data management, data handling, data analysis and provide insights into genetic sequences, disease pathways, patient-specific treatment plans and driving into precision forward medicine or precision medicine. And the last but not the least is you will see more collaboration in this space. You will no longer have one startup doing one thing. You will have a network of startups. And that's what Biotechnica is developing. We are ready to incubate you if you are a startup in any of these nine spaces. And we will give you all the funding. We will support you. You can work in our office. And that is called collaborative science or open science. So open science is the future where startups will come together, collaborate with each other. They'll work on common ground and develop products and then partner to market it. So the future of biotech is going to be collaborative. 
the future of biotech is going to be where we do not have boundaries. We are open. Biotechnica is, ready to create the, is already creating that platform actually. We'll be sharing data. We'll be sharing our research. We'll be sharing our resources. And we'll foster a culture of open science, accelerating innovation and making breakthroughs through, through more accessible and global scientific community, which is all of you, all of us, come together and we win. So this is all about the top 10 types of uh, startups which will rule the world of biotech in the next 25 years. So actually by 2047 or maybe beyond that, we will see these kind of startups racing through and growing. And one way you can get into this is strategize today. If you know what kind of companies will be there in the tomorrow, in tomorrow, you can create your career according to it and you can get into it. Now, I know a lot of uh, new tech startups I forgot to mention, which is like space age biotech startups and all, but that probably will take a little more longer time. But this video was about what kind of startups we'll see in the next 25 years. So strategize well, get into these startups, and who knows, you might be heading one of the startups. So with all the best wishes to all our subscribers, remember, keep moving forward. One step at a time, and you're going to win. Thank you.